Georgia Davidson started broadcasting to Idahoans on KIDL radio, then the only radio station on the air in Boise. At that time, there was a government freeze on television stations because they weren't considered necessary during a wartime economy. But in 1952, when the freeze was lifted, Davidson sent an application for KIDO television to the FCC, and it was approved in December of that year. She had enough vision of the future to understand it was a gamble worth taking, and on July 12th, she flipped the switch that put KIDO-TV on the air. A switch flipped 68 years ago today. So happy birthday, KIDO-TVB. Well, KIDO didn't become KTVB until 1959. So 68 years ago, there were very few television sets in the Boise area homes. We're talking like in the hundreds, maybe. And despite the cost of starting a TV station here, it's the same as setting one up in New York City, the cost anyway. Georgia Davidson, well, she went forward anyway. You know what else is cool? When KTVB became an NBC affiliate, those network meetings consisted of 125 men and Mrs. Davidson. Back in 2003, we were celebrating our golden anniversary, which consisted of stories like the one you just saw about Mrs. Davidson and this one from Alice Newton, in which you may see some very familiar faces from years past. In July of 1953, Channel 7 was born. At the time, it was called KIDO-TV, and television broadcasting was a brand new business. Hectic, busy, everything was new. Uh, every motion was new. You didn't know what you were doing half the time. Actually, it was, uh, it was fun. Bill Harvey was one of the pioneers here at KTVB and one of its first celebrities. Well, I was a big star. I mean, a really big one. Good evening. Bill Harvey reporting Weekend Edition. Hey, there goes Bill Harvey. That's Bill Harvey. I mean, did you recognize him? I thought that was neat. <laughs> the following program is brought to you in living color. In 1955, KTVB started airing some network programming in color, but there were still only about 350 television sets in our entire broadcasting area. And back then, there was a very fine line between news and commercials. Fortunately, no bomb was found. Bowling, basketball, or ice skating, yes, you have a choice when you go Philip 66. Well, there's something like the fire's out now, folks, and uh, five people are dead. But in the meantime, you can get this uh, hemorrhoid preparation at so-and-so's place downtown. Just a segue. I know that KTVB Channel 7 is... Bob Kruger started with KTVB right in 1956. Channel 7 was just three years old, that's right. He climbed his way up the corporate ladder to be the station's president and general manager. A lot changed over his decades with Channel 7. Well, when we got here, uh, Allison, the uh, news was just almost non-existent. So we had a little 15-minute newscast called the Flying A Reporter. Kruger says things really got serious in 1970 when KTVB broke ground on a new building. It's the place we still call home today, here on Fairview and Curtis. In the early 80s, some familiar faces made their debut on Channel 7 and still bring you the news today. Dee Sarton, Carolyn Hawley, Rick Lance, and Mark Johnson. Today, they, along with many, many others, celebrate the 50th anniversary of Idaho's News Channel 7. To me, television, local television, is built around its news. And we continually expanded our news from where we started with 15 minutes of just local news, and look where we are today. Now, I think TV is a wonderful art and craft, and it's, uh, and it's my joy and privilege to have been a member of it. Mr. Harvey passed away a couple of years after that interview, but since then, a few of those longtime faces have retired from KTVB as well, including Dee Sarton and Carolyn Hawley. But if you're an avid viewer, you've probably seen Carolyn filling in from, with us from time to time. In just a few months, another big name are going to join that, is going to join that list. Mark Johnson will sign off in December after decades in the business and a lot of those here on KTVB. We're going to celebrate MJ on another day, but check out what else we did find in the KTVB vault. Some pretty retro equipment. Take a look at this. And roll one, fade my cue. Good afternoon. When Welcome you watch to Channel 7 Channel today, there are literally thousands of components, computers, and gadgets that make the magic happen. Cure to one. The same held true 50 years ago, although the pieces and parts behind the scenes were fewer, bigger, and harder to handle. Trying to keep the tube equipment running required a lot more manpower. Take a look for yourself. These big, bulky black and white cameras were state-of-the-art back when Channel 7 signed on. 
However, engineers had to spend hundreds of hours each week keeping them in tip-top shape just for broadcasts. Eventually, color cameras arrived back in the late 60s that were still bigger than the crews behind them. All right, about a month before that story aired in 2003, the studio was outfitted with new cameras. And that's not the only thing that's changed in these last 18 years. Now, back then, we had in-studio camera operators, usually one for each camera that you can kind of see scattered around here. Well, since then, we've kind of whittled away at our studio crew. We now have 11 cameras in studio, 10 of which are remote controlled, and we have one camera operator that works them all. And you can see they're much smaller than they were back then. And even a couple of years ago, we remodeled all of this studio. At one point back then, we had one of the oldest, or if not the oldest, studio that was still in operation across the country. The oldest in the country. It's pretty amazing. And well, with the pandemic, we're still trying to break this one in, but we still got some pretty cool cameras out there.